Welcome back to the Ripe Wave Audio community. My name is John, and for this video, we continue our Ripe Wave Audio series of home theater amplifiers in 2022, and this one is for audio control. Now, this follows a long series which started with Monolith by Monoprice, Emotiva, Tone Winner, IOTA VX, Outlaw Audio, ATI Amplifier Technologies, OSD, NAD, Marantz, Yamaha, Onkyo Integra, Rotel, Arcam JBL Synthesis, and now this, our 14th video in the series, Audio Control. And this is one that a few of you have requested, and I'm very pleased to be able to do this. And, um, you know, they're doing some unique things with this amplifier range. This is a, a Gen 4, fourth generation of amplifiers from Audio Control. This is their Avalon series, their Pantages, and their Savoy series. And these range between... They're in the two to four thousand dollar range. Let's just say that. And this current generation is from 2019. Now we'll touch upon a few of the prior uh, generations models just for comparison's sake. But let's get into this. The Avalon series is their entry level series. Now what we see with the Avalon G4 is a four channel model that supports balanced and unbalanced connections. And this is a class H amplifier. These four channels can drive 230 watts uh, each channel. This comes to the market at $2,390. Now there are some interesting capabilities uh, that are revealed on the back panel of this device. Now on the front, there's, it's very plain. It has this blue illuminated bar in front, the power button, and that's it. No power meters on this model. Now what you can do is bridge these channels. So you take this four channel amplifier down to two. And whether you do that, there's that button, uh, and I've blown this up in the bottom right so you can see it better, but it, uh, you push that mono button, that bridges two of the channels uh, there, and you, you create your two channel amplifier by pushing that button. But there's a couple of other features. You can adjust the levels the input levels of each channel so that uh, you, you can help use that to balance out the system. There are also uh, choices for crossover. So if you want to use this four channel amplifier to uh, do a, a bi-amp situation for a stereo pair, you can decide uh, that those channels, channels one and two, are going to be low pass or high pass and adjust the frequency. And then channels three and four, likewise, uh, can be low pass or high pass. So if your channel one and two are low pass, then your three, four could be high pass. Or just set these to off and it's not doing any crossover uh, whatsoever. Now there's one other unique selection switch on the back of this audio control model. And that's the ground at isolation. So if you start to hear a hum, you can try out the other settings. There's three settings. The ground, GND setting is the default, and that uh, uses the same grounding as the chassis. Uh, you can isolate the chassis ground from the audio signal by using the float or the IRC connection, and you can try each of those settings until that, if you have a hum, that, that disappears. So that's, that's a nice feature, and we haven't seen that uh, level of flexibility in other uh, brands. Now a quick word about class G versus class H. So class G employs several rails at discrete voltages and you can switch between them as needed. Uh, what a class H does, which these models do, is it tracks the input signal and modulates the voltage on the supply rails. And this is what audio control is doing versus what you see with class G. So, uh, a, a difference there between class G and H. Now when we look inside the Avalon, uh, you can see that it is using a toroidal power supply for these four channels. And you, you've got separate heat sinks it looks like for each of those uh, channel uh, settings. And we do see that there are a couple of fans 
uh, mounted on the bottom of this chassis. Now, moving up to the next range, which is the Pentagis range. Now, this goes from a four-channel unit up to a five-channel unit. Uh, probably that's why they call it Pentagis, the, the, the five, right? So this is a $2,500 unit at the time of discontinuation. It was first introduced in 2009, and it delivered 230 watts also class H, into these five channels. The big difference you'll notice here is the meters, the digital LED meters that indicate the for each channel, left, center, right, left surround, and right surround on this. So uh, you do have those additional meters on the prior generation, the Gen 3. Moving up to the Gen 4, they've removed those power meters. And... Um, I kind of like power meters. I, I wish they would have left those in. Uh, there may be some signal improvements by taking them out, but uh, yeah, I like them. So the, the new unit is selling for the Gen 4 at $2,990. So given the fact that there was 10 years between this, we do expect a, a bump in price. This is also a five-channel model. This is also 230 watts per channel, class H. Now, like the Avalon series, there is a way to adjust the input levels on these units. And there is a way to adjust your ground isolation, the standard chassis ground or float or RC, just like with the Avalon. And with the other models, this is also taking balanced as well as unbalanced connections. We do not have an interior shot uh, for the Pentagis range. When we move up to the Savoy, this is a seven channel unit. We can also look at the Gen 3. And once again, their Gen 3 had a power meter on there, a digital LED power meter. Now this $3,000 unit supports seven channels, as we said, introduced in 2009 and this delivered 203 watts into those seven channels, class H. Now we do not find the standard ground isolation on these prior generation products, and the Savoy is no different. But when you move up to the Gen 4, the ground isolation is there. So the new Gen 4 is $790 more at $3,790, also seven channels, but they do give you more output 230 watts this time into those seven channels for class H. And back, of course, is the uh, also the level setting that uh, you can do for the inputs, something that the Gen 3 didn't do it, uh, as well. So that really completes out the line. We don't have interior shots for the Pentagis or the Savoy line. Uh, but here are the everything together on one page. You know, it's Pretty consistent design language. You know, even the Gen 4 would sit in nicely if paired with a, a Gen 3 amplifier. You know, the, the changes in design language are not so great that uh, uh, it does definitely seems like it's still from the same company. And you can see how they scale this up with the channels. It gets a little more expensive, but we think it's still the generally the same design. And here clearly showing that the Gen 3 models had the power meters, whereas the Gen 4 do not. And that's a nice way to compare these here. You can see essentially as you move between the Avalon, the Pentagis, and the Savoy, you're gaining channels. Now let's take a look at this in our comparison table. Uh, you see here that there are some differences uh, between generations. So the new generation, the Gen 4, all have an input impedance of 100 kilo ohms, whereas the prior generations were 30 kilo ohm for the five channel model and 22 kilo ohms for the seven channel model. Now we could not find a output trigger on the Savoy Gen 3, but on the Savoy Gen 4, now they have both input and output triggers as they do on the other models. Input sensitivity into 8 ohms is 2.7 volts for all the Gen 4 models. And for Gen 3, it was 1.42 volts. 
the cost per channel uh, hovers around four to six hundred dollars. The lowest uh, price out there was the Gen 3 Savoy, uh, but the Gen uh, 4 Savoy is at five hundred and forty one dollars. Uh, so that is still the lowest cost model in their portfolio per channel. And it goes up to $598 for the Pentagis and the Avalon ranges uh, per channel. And these were all class H uh, between these two generations that are separated by 10 years of development. Now the Gen 4s, they do post a gain of 28 dBs. I did not see a posting for the Gen 3 but they all accept a load impedance between 4 and 8 ohm speaker loads. There is the line output, which is nice to see if you have downstream amplification, so that uh, gives you an unbalanced connection on the line output. Looking at the um, output power, so they they pretty consistent in keeping this at 230 watts, regardless of the number of channels. The only uh, discrepancy there is the third generation Savoy only delivered 203 watts per channel. Now into 4 ohms, uh, and they do specify this for the new Gen 4, at 300 watts. They did not give a specification for the Gen 3. But they do all their measurements at full range, 20 to 20,000 hertz, which is good to see. And total harmonic distortion is 0.04% for the, all the new models and between 0.05 and 0.08% for the Gen 3. The signal to noise ratio is all 102 decibels for all the Gen 4 models. So this is one area we did see the specification go down because the Gen 3 were rated at 110 decibels. And these are measured in the same way, so we do wonder uh, why that, that was the decrease in the signal to noise rating there. Now with the Gen 4, another new feature that's clear here is there's four bridgeable channels, so effectively creating two channels, two stereo channels from four, and they will do this for four of the channels in the Pentagis as well as the Savoy. A 600 watt capability into eight ohms. Now they don't rate this for four ohms, so I probably wouldn't want to try it with four ohm speakers although you may have some success. I, 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 generally, I generally feel only comfortable when the manufacturer clearly indicates that a particular setting is rated for a particular load impedance. And for this bridge output, it is full range. It's also 0.04% and it's still 102 decibels. Now looking at the dimensions, now these are all 17 inch width at 425 millimeters. The uh, depth, they're all 16.5 inches or 419 millimeters. It's only the height that varies. So the Avalon is three and a half inches or 89 millimeters. Uh, the Pantages G4 is five and a quarter or 139 millimeters. And that's the same height that you'll see on the Gen 3 Pentages, as well as the height that's on the, the same height that's on the Savoy Gen 4. Now the Savoy Gen 3 was a little taller at 7 inches, 178 millimeters. Now the weight ranges from 38 pounds, 17.2 kilograms for the four channel model. Uh, but the Pentages G4 moves up to 43 pounds, 19.5 kilograms, which is the same weight they post for the Savoy 7-channel model, which uh, we tend to question because if you have more amplifiers, they tend to be a little higher in weight. So that's uh, something that we'd like to see clarified. Now they all have IEC removable power cords. They all support dual voltage, either 120 or 240 volts but you should make sure that you're selecting the right model from the factory because this is not field selectable. All the power supplies are toroidal and they have ground isolation for the new Gen 4 models of each type. Consumption ranges from 1200 watts for the Avalon to 1500 watts for the Pantages and 2100 for the Savoy. 
Now these numbers are up from the Gen 3. Uh, standby power is rated at, 10, at 2 watts for all the Gen 4 models. Crosstalk is rated at 80 dBs for Gen 4, and damping factors are 450 microfarads. Now I don't know if other models have fans in them, but we can clearly see it from the picture of the Avalon G4 that fans are in use, so we could only assume that other models in the series also employ fans. And that covers it for the audio control uh, amplifiers. Now what do you think of these? Do you like that flexibility that they give of adjusting the input bolters to be able to select the type of ground isolation that is there? That feedback would be useful to the RipeWave audio community. Be sure to conclude that in your comments. And uh, you know, I hope you're enjoying this series. If you do, you know, please like and subscribe to this RipeWave audio community and be sure to hit that bell icon so you'll be notified when the next video is posted. And we would really appreciate if you decide to be a Patreon. And we can direct you to that link at www.patreon.com slash RipeWave. If you can contribute in that way, that would be much appreciated. We hope you continue to watch this series. We have a few more coming up on amplifiers all ready to go. We just have to film them and edit them. So until the next time, keep evolving your audio experience.